Hello and thanks for watching this Acumatica demo on user security. So in Acumatica, security is role based, which means you can define a group of users to a role and then you can apply your security to those roles to make things easier to propagate these security rights. And in Acumatica, security can be done at the screen and the field level. So it's very granular. If we jump down to our more items and we go to user security, we can bring up the user security work area. As you can see here, user management is broken into users, roles, user types, and then you apply your access rights to the role, a user, or you can look at it by screen. Now before we dive into that, let's take a look at our security preferences. So in Acumatica, you have the ability to force a user to change their password every X number of days. So that's an option. We can require a minimum password length. So for example, an eight character password. We can also require the password meet complexity requirements. And if we go into our help, you can see that complexity is defined here. So it requires a lowercase, uppercase, and special symbols and digits. So if we go back, on top of that, you can do a password validation mask. This will force your users to follow a certain format when creating their passwords. And you could define what is the error message when a user types in an incorrect password. Now if we move down, Acumatica supports multi-factor authentication. So you have options here required for unknown devices or just required all the time. Required for unknown devices would force the user to go through the two-factor authentication, meaning as soon as they put in their password, a email or SMS message would send out a pin code and that pin code would be required by the user to enter in in order to completely log into the system. Thereafter, if they log in from the same device, Acumatica will no longer prompt them. We also have an account lockout policy. So if you don't log in correctly after three times, we can lock the account for 15 minutes. And the, this count of three, in this case it's set up for three, will reset the counter after 10 minutes. There's additional options such as what role do you need to be part of in order to edit the menu structure. We have an access history screen which can keep audit history. So if we take a look at that, that looks like this. So for example, you can see the different operations that are occurring against this site. So these are the different logins and if I go into, for example, logout, I can see the logouts. I can go in and I can see all the different screens that were accessed and all of these different options. And when do we want to clean out that history? Well, right now it's set up for 999 months. Additionally, Acumatica supports federated Active Directory logins. So if you have an Office 365, you can set it up so that all you need to do is log into your Office 365 account and Acumatica will log in. It's a single sign-on. But additionally, we also have other external identity providers, such as the Exchange Identity Token, Google, and Microsoft Account. This is the personal Microsoft account, not the Office 365. So you would configure these accordingly, just by going into the help and putting in the realm, the application ID, and the secret that you set up with these different external providers. So let's go back to our user security, and let's take a look at a user. So when we create a user in the system, there's a few different ways to do it. So the first is, if we're using Acumatica's native security, we would put in a login, which could be an either email address or just a username. When we do this, we can then let the system generate a password automatically. Now, Acumatica is a template for sending out this password, 
and it could send it to the end user with a welcome message saying, here's your password, your temporary password to the system. And you'd use that password to log in first time. And then the system would force the user to change the password. Now, additionally, we have linked entity. This is Acumatica's employee. So Acumatica maintains an employee list that you can maintain in the system. And those employees have information, for example, about when the user was hired, what department they're part of. We won't get into that. But when you link this employee, Acumatica then can automatically bring over the email address. In this case, that particular employee didn't have an email address, which is why we got the error message. But you would associate it here, the email and the first name and last name would come in automatically, and the two would be connected. The benefit to having a linked entity is every time that particular employee creates, for example, a sales lead or an opportunity, Acumatica can automatically populate the owner of that particular entity. Now you can see these settings over here. This allows the end user to do a password recovery. So if they forgot their password, there's a forgot password link on the main login page. They can click that if this is enabled. We can allow the user to change their password. They can do that through their profile right here. We can override and make it for this user. Their password never expires. And as I mentioned before, if you change the password, you can force the user to change the password on the next login. Or if you're creating it for the first time and you've generated that password. This allows you to limit the number of sessions this particular user can log in as. And we looked at it earlier, the two-factor authentication is not set up for this particular company. But for this particular user, I can override and turn it on. Now at the bottom of the screen, you can see the roles. So these we're going to get into in a second, but essentially these are different categories of users or departments in your company that you would create that are synonymous with the types of work that they do in Acumatica. Now if you saw our other video on security roles, Acumatica out of the box is now creating a lot of predefined roles to make it easier for you to set up security where it relates to financials. So you could see here, for example, AP admin or AP clerk or AP viewer gives you the ability to do these particular functions and they're already predefined and all you need to do is say this user is an AP clerk, therefore they'll get that access to those functions. So we would define the user roles that this particular user has. Under statistics, we can see account creation, when they last logged in, number of attempts if their account is locked out, last lockout date. And you could also see that up here. If the user is locked out, you'll see a button to unlock that particular user. Let's enter in an email so we can get this saved. Now you can see that account creation date. Now Acumatica gives you the ability to filter your users and not allow them to log in unless they have this specific IP address. This is quite useful if you have users that maybe want to log in remotely and maybe you have other users that you don't want to allow to log in remotely. In that scenario, you take your main office location IP address, the external IP address, not the internal, and you'd put it in here as a range. And this would prevent that particular user from logging in unless they fell within this IP address range. We talked about the external identities where you can put the specific user key for the specific user in the system. We have personal settings such as the personal PDF signing certificate, what their time zone is, the default branch or company that they sign in as. And what is the initial screen that they go into when they log into Acumatica? You can define this here. So these are all the screens in Acumatica in the system. You can see the different devices that they've logged in as on their mobile device. So this is using the Acumatica mobile app, either in the iOS or the Android store. You'll see that here, the device model and 
operating system version. And you can also see location tracking if it's turned on. So what this does is it gives you where they've logged in from when they signed in. And this is quite useful for field service. So an Acumatica field service system can show where that particular user was when they created that field service transaction. Now, if we go over to user roles, you can see the different user roles in the system. So earlier we talked about how we can make an AP clerk. Now from this screen, Acumatica lets you add users to the role or see what users are part and attached to that role. As opposed to going into each individual user and adding them to maybe a newly created role. Acumatica also has user types. If you use the customer portal, we have, for example, an external user that we created as a user type in our demo company. And the entity type is either a contact or an employee. So everything we've been talking about up to now has really been an employee. But contact allows you to sign in as a contact as opposed to an employee. And typically that's used for the customer portal. So if you have a customer and you go into their list of contacts, and we open it up, in this contact, if we go over to user info, we can change this user type to an unrestricted external user and then generate a password. And this allows the user to get these security roles, such as being able to sign into the portal. Now the customer portal, if you've seen our video on the customer portal, it has multiple different options that you can use in it, such as being able to see financials, being able to get to the support case system, being able to place an order online. So you can create different roles for those specific functions for this particular user and attach them. So that particular user maybe can do a lot of things, but they can't get in and look at accounts receivable invoices. So that's our user type. If we go back and now we'll take a look at associating access rights to a role, a user or a screen. So let's get started by the screen. So access rights by screen essentially gives you the screens on the left hand side. So you can drill in and look at maybe finance and journal transactions. And this gives you the ability to see all of the different roles and what their rights are. So for example, GL Clerk has the ability to delete. So if you look at the different levels of security you have, not set means it's inherited from a parent screen. Revoked means we're explicitly revoking it to this role. View only means I can see all the data, but I can't make any changes. I can't create a new record. I can't change an existing record and I can't delete anything. And as you move down, you can see edit, insert and delete, which give you more rights progressively. Now you can see we're quite granular with our security. So if I were to expand this, I can see journal transactions and I can see the GL batch and the GL transaction and the GL voucher. If I were to expand GL batch, you can see all of the different actions and fields underneath that segment. And if we take a look at that screen, you will see all of the different actions and reports and all of the different fields right here. So for example, if we were to go into reference number and say that the GL clerk had that field revoked, then that field would no longer show up. If we were to say view only, then that field would show up, but it would be read only. Now the reference number is not a great example because we would always look at that and never edit that field, for example, but other fields may apply. Now down below are our transactions. So if we go back to our access rights, you can see GL transactions. And that's all of the different fields and functionality that is contained in this segment below. So for example, whether or not I can add a row to this, 
whether or not I can edit or upload. All of these options are part of this segment. Now, if we jump back out to user security and we look at access rights by role, in this scenario, we pick the role first. So if we go back down to GL clerk again, we can then highlight the different screen and see what different rights we have. So if I go back to finance and I go down to journal transactions, you can see by segment the different rights and you can make changes accordingly. And if we drill down even further, go to GL batch, you can now see all of those items that used to be over here and you can associate rights accordingly instead of seeing the roles over here and associate all the roles across the board. So again, in this scenario, everything we're doing is for this specific role. Now, if we take a look at access rights by user, you pick a user. What this does is if we go into finance and we select journal transactions again, This shows us what the effective rights are for this particular user. Now in itself, it's hard to determine, well, how did this user get this right? Because we define our rights by the role. So what you can do is you can say view roles. It'll show what roles this particular user is part of and where it's getting this delete right. So as you can see here, all of these different roles are revoking the right. However, because this user is part of the administrator, it's getting the delete right. So that gives you an idea of how you can apply security and configure it. Additionally, it can be very helpful to take a look at some of these reports. So if I go into access rights by role and I run it, I get a complete listing, and in this case it's 166 pages. I can do a quick search. For example, maybe I'm looking for a journal entry, and I could take a look how this particular right is associated to the role and what access rights is being given. So I can go through this and take a quick look and maybe find out an anomaly or an issue that I have in my security configuration. Additionally, we also have access rights by screen. So if you take a look at that, that'll give you all the different screens, but then it'll give you all the roles against it. So again, you're just looking at it in a different view. If we take a look at some of the other menu items here, audit history gives me the ability to look at what user did what, what user changed what fields in any particular screen in the system. Additionally, we talked about location tracking. This gives you a guide as to the user and what location they're in. That looks like this. So you can see the latitude, longitude, and where this particular user is. And just moving along, if you can see the access for Acumatica support. That gives you the ability to control Acumatica getting into the site and what rights they have. All the different encryption certificates that you have on hand and your audit preferences. So that's it. That's user security basics. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.